Hey, shark fans, it's Melinda Marcellus. Welcome to Heard It on the Shark. I'll be your show host, and Mississippi Hills National Heritage Area is your show sponsor. Heard It on the Shark is a weekly interview show that airs every Tuesday at 11 a.m. on the Shark 102.3 FM radio station based in Ripley, Mississippi. Then it's released as a podcast on all the major podcast platforms. You'll hear interviews with the movers and shakers in North Mississippi who are making things happen. I'll talk to entrepreneurs, leaders of business, medicine, education, and the people behind all the amazing things happening in North Mississippi. When people ask you, how did you know about that? You'll say, I heard it on the shark. Heard it on the shark is brought to you by the Mississippi Hills National Heritage Area. We want you to get out and discover the historic, cultural, natural, scenic, and recreational treasures of the Mississippi Hills that are right in your backyard. And of course, we want you to take the Shark 1023 FM along for the ride. Musical credit belongs to Hill Country Blues guitar legend Gary Burnside and the late great Buddy Grisham playing Long Way Home from their album Acoustic Brothers, which was recorded at Sun Bear Studio in Ripley, Mississippi. This program was recorded at Sun Bear Studio in Ripley, Mississippi. Hey, Shark fans, it's Melinda with another episode of Heard It on the Shark. And today in Sun Bear Studio, I have Mr. Blake Long, who is the, I'm going to say, the Director of Sports Marketing at Northeast Mississippi Community College. I know that's not correct, but it's close. Blake, how should I say that? Well, you're very close. Thank you, Melinda, first off, for having me. I guess the official title is assigned on my contract by Coach Ford is Sports Information Director. So it's pretty much, you You were right on the market. Marketing is part of, of what we do for sure and a couple of years ago you guys came to us in the summertime and said hey we need a radio home for the northeast tigers and i'm gonna tell you blake that was the craziest day because five years ago when we started doing radio i said one of my big goals is to become the northeast tiger sports home and Lo and behold, there y'all come. (laughs) You know, it's kind of some things are kind of just made to happen. And I can't, obviously, I'm going to brag on y'all a lot here today. But, uh, you know, the the partnership between the Shark and Northeast, when at least as far as you're concerned, kind of went back before even in myself, Will Colmeyer and and the Tiger Talk podcast. And, of course, Tiger Talk still airs here on the Shark as well every week with President Ford and and Liz Calvary, our marketing specialist for the college. But, you know, Will kind of established that. And uh, we were blessed to just kind of come on board at the the right time. And, And I think it's been a great two years of sports so far and looking forward to year three yeah not to gush or anything but you know the shark covers the same counties that northeast covers and i am such a huge fan of community college i think that they are the saving grace that makes it possible for everybody to get into the field that is right for them at a price they can afford and get on with their lives. I love community college and I love community college sports. So it, we're just honored to have you guys on the team with us. Well, thank you. And you mentioned that, you know, and, and we're, I know we're talking sports today, but goodness gracious, Northeast just serves so many people from all different age groups, from from different backgrounds. But we've got five great counties, Tishomingo, Alcorn, Prentice, Tippa, and Union, like you said, right here in the Sharks hometown area. Um, we, we love getting students from from Benton, Lee County, which the Shark also serves as well. So, you know, it, it's just a tremendous opportunity. And again, as you mentioned, from the workforce to regular classes that students that are coming out of high school take to prepare for the four-year level. You know, we serve industries in the area so well. We have a campus in every county. Now, of course, there's a beautiful new campus here in uh, Tippa County in Ripley that serves the people here so well. We're just, it's an honor to be Tippa County's community college. It's like I, I like to put it every time I go somewhere. We are Blank County's community college, and we love serving Ripley and all the community here in Tippa County. Yeah, it's just a, to me, it's such a great partnership for us because we love putting out there what you guys are doing. And man, what a great product it was last year. Let's, I just would like for you to kind of recap for everybody. It was a stellar year for Northeast. It was. It certainly was. And I'll give you the Cliff Notes version to avoid not going very long. But, you know, I guess the highlight was men's basketball claiming a conference championship for the second time in four years. They had a great, great season, 27 and five overall record. Coach Wright was an 
named uh, Corwood Wright. Our our head coach was named the Conference Coach of the Year, and so a tremendous honor there. We had a, a freshman who was named All American, first freshman All American at Northeast in over 20 years. His name is Tyler Bird. He'll be back again this fall with us, and has got a lot of accolades in the summer. I figure he'll go to a Division One school after this year. Um, so tremendous product. I invite you if you didn't get a chance to watch him in person, come out to uh, the Coliseum in Boonville this fall or this winter and watch him uh, for sure. But the men's basketball conference champions 27 and 5 uh, the ladies basketball team was outstanding as well with 20 wins for the first time uh, since 2006 that's nearly 20 years so both teams with over 20 wins that just didn't happen at the community college level very often but northeast great basketball season both made it into the region playoffs and did an outstanding job there football went six and three their three losses were by combined 15 points so you're that close to going undefeated in the regular season and you know of course between ripley and northeast both teams had a very successful 2023 fall season. I'm so proud to have them here on the Shark as well. But football, again, tremendous. Had at least over a dozen players go to Division One schools um, after the season was over with, including Keaton Thomas, who I want to brag on. Keaton was a star linebacker for us last year from Jacksonville, Florida, but was named a first-team All-American and then is now at Baylor University in Texas, and he was one of their representatives at their conference media day this year. So kind of a rare deal for somebody to leave you know, another college, go there, and then and make such an impact just in a couple of months to where you're already representing your team in front of those ESPN cameras. So huge deal for Keaton and huge deal for our program is to get him out to Baylor. And then, of course, in the spring, baseball and softball, you know, they kept the winning right along. Baseball uh, made the region playoffs for the third straight year. Congratulations to Coach Harrelson, who won over his 200th game this year as head coach here at Northeast. Richie Harrelson, a lot of people remember him from his high school playing days up at Tishomingo County, the Bazooka from Iuka. That's one of the great nicknames in all of sports, Melinda, the Bazooka. Bazooka from Iuka, and that's our head coach, Richie Harrelson. All our coaches are great, but Richie does a tremendous job. And then over on the softball diamond, uh, we just had the winningest sophomore class. Of course, we two-year college. Our sophomores leave and move on to the next level, but um, our sophomore class was the winningest ever in school history. They had 79 wins in two years, so pretty awesome stuff, and that's not counting tennis, golf, who all had successful years. Our men's tennis team made it back to the postseason for the first time uh, since we reinstated that sport three years ago. Our men's golf team was nationally ranked I and mean, had two all-conference players as well and so it's just in the course volleyball you know started volleyball last year for the first time and had their inaugural season under coach Mays and so just a really banner year at Northeast and, and even better things are coming this year I think. I'm really glad that you brought up that six and three football season because those games were so close those oh. three losses were so close I thought you know it's too bad there's not three columns in football mm-hmm. like win loss and oh my goodness, it was so close. Absolutely. I, I tell you what, every loss was heartbreaking. You know, yes. I mentioned they were about 15 points, but two of the three were in overtime too. I mean, in the last it was terrible. One, it was terrible. The last one was the one point loss at Northwest. And if we'd won that game, you're going to the playoffs. You know, that was kind of a win you're in, lose you're done. And uh, unfortunately, and I don't blame our coaching staff. I loved the call. You know, they went for two points in overtime for the win. Uh, we had the second possession there and uh, give Northwest's player credit. He made, kind of came out of nowhere and made a tackle at the one yard line on our guy and so um, in heartbreaking fashion our season ended there but I love the call from our coaches uh, who do a tremendous job with our student athletes there on the football side but yeah whew, we had some games last year and even some wins as well you know we beat ICC 20 to 14 I think we were down 14 or nothing in that game and had to come back and win that one so yeah there were quite a bit of nail batters last year at home. it was I, so exciting and I'm gonna tell you I'm a radio person and I, and I, I love for everybody to listen on the radio mm-hmm. and I know there's times when you you aren't in front of a screen and having it on the radio is awesome but there are other times when uh you're you guys have nemcc tv and man it's exciting to watch y'all on tv that is some really good camera work you do and it is just a lot of fun to watch these young athletes work well, thank you, Melinda. Um, and we love the partnership because, you know, we take, uh, we share the commercial space. We share uh, the commentators for both. And Carter Smith and Jody Presley, our, our dynamic duo play-by-play, do a phenomenal job. And we're so blessed to have Michael Harrison, the voice of Tippecanoe County Sports, who will come in and do several games for us each year as well when Carter and Jody are doing other high school games themselves. But we really do. We've got a great product, and, and I couldn't do it without several people. Um, Elijah Brooks, a Burnsville native, has done a tremendous job as our lead producer 
semester. Um, he's actually headed back to school to finish his bachelor's degree, and so we're going to miss him some this year, but he will still be around. I'm very thankful for that. Ryan Moreland is my uh, assistant. He's the sports information specialist, but we work really well hand-in-hand hand together as, as kind of leading the sports information side. Um, but we also rely so heavily on student workers, Melinda, and and that's another awesome opportunity for high school students. And, and if you're listening to this, you know, think about it as you're a senior for next year. You know, we've got a great group coming in this year. I've got a local tip of county and coming in, Cooper Winters from Ripley, and looking forward to working with him. I think he did some filming for Ripley High School's football team, so he'll be one of our camera people on NEMCC TV this year. Um, but when it comes to everything but the the play-by-play, we pretty much are student-led or or have a role with a student doing something. And so it's an awesome opportunity to help earn a scholarship, get your college paid for. Oh, you might even get a, a paycheck to do it. Um, but we typically employ about uh, eight to ten students every school year that will help with statistics during the games. Um, again, producing a broadcast, camera work. You never know what we may sign you up to do. But, yeah, we couldn't do it without the students. And, again, Northeast, we're so enrollment-driven, student-driven, and, and it all goes back to them. We're, we're here for the student opportunities. Now, Blake, we have a lot more to talk about, and we've run out of time for this week. So will you come back and let's talk about the upcoming school year? Absolutely. Would love to do it, Melinda. Thank you for having me today. Okay, Shark fans, that's it for this edition of Heard It on the Shark. Tune in every Tuesday at 11 a.m. to find out what's happening with local community leaders. If you have a question, comment, or suggestion for an interview, or if you want access to this interview, go to our website, shark1023.com, and click on the podcast tab. Keep it tuned to the Shark 1023 and have a great rest of the day. The Mississippi Hills National Heritage Area was established by the United States Congress in 2009 and represents a distinctive cultural landscape shaped by the dynamic intersection of Appalachian and Delta cultures. This intersection has produced a powerful concentration of nationally significant cultural icons, including King of Rock and Roll Elvis Presley, First Lady of Country Music Tammy Wynette, Blues Legend Howlin' Wolf, Civil Rights Icons Ida B. Wells Barnett and James Meredith, America's Favorite Playwright Tennessee Williams, and No. Nobel laureate William Faulkner. The stories of the Mississippi Hills are many and powerful, from music and literature to Native American and African American heritage to the Civil War. The Mississippi Hills National Heritage Area supports the local institutions that preserve and share Northeast Mississippi's rich heritage. Begin your discovery of the historic, cultural, natural, scenic, and recreational treasures of our region by visiting the Mississippi Hills National Heritage Area online at mississippihills.org. This show is made possible by J.C. Media LLC in Ripley, Mississippi. J.C. Media owns the Shark 102.3 Classic Rock FM radio station where the show is hosted and Sunbear Recording Studio where the interviews are recorded. We need your feedback and support. If you listen to the podcast on a player like iTunes, Google Podcasts, or Amazon Music, please subscribe to the show and leave us a review. We also have an email in which you can share your feedback. That email is theshark1023 at gmail.com. Subscribe to our podcast on your favorite app or stream episodes online at shark1023.com front slash podcast. Today's episode was produced by Melinda Marsalis. It was edited by Rick Williams and engineered by Chris Marsalis. The podcast technician is Joyce Grady.